When you first start designing parts in CAD as a student in university, you create sketches, add part features, and assemble components. And if it looks right on screen, you think the work is done. But the truth is a visually correct model with zero design intent can hide a multitude of problems. The way you reference features, define relationships, and structure your models determines whether your design will behave predictably as it evolves or explode when changes are made. A single misstep in your CAD model or design intent can ripple across an entire project, creating hours of rework, budget overruns, derail product launches, and damage your credibility as a mechanical engineer. Over the years, I've observed mechanical engineers, both fresh graduates and experienced professionals, repeatedly make the same costly mistakes that don't reveal themselves until deep into manufacturing, assembly, or testing. At that point, correcting them becomes a exorbitantly expensive, time-consuming, and stressful. So in this video, we're going to cover the most common design mistakes that I see mechanical engineers committing, and more importantly, how you can avoid them so you can improve your designs right away. There's also a game-changing tool, Jigga.io, that has totally changed the way I design and make parts that I'm excited to share with you. So let's get started. The first category of mistakes is design intent and CAD best practices. These these mistakes relate to how your CAD models behave when dimensions and features are modified and how your feature tree is structured. Errors in this category may not cause immediate failure, but will make your model fragile and difficult to update later down the road, leading to lost hours and project delays. Mistake number one is poor feature referencing. This is a very common mistake that I see and occurs when features are anchored to geometry that is unstable or likely to change. If your part model crashes every time you go to update a dimension or feature, it likely incorporates no design intent. For example, imagine creating this bracket with a slot. You dimension the slot from an edge that might later be extended or modified due to chamfers, fillets, or drafts. When the base is resized, the slot moves unpredictably, breaking the design. This leads to wasted time, rework, and potential downstream assembly issues. To avoid this, always anchor features to stable geometry. Geometry. Consider the function of the feature and how it will behave as the design evolves. Use midpoints, construction lines, and robust references that are unlikely to change. Test your design by modifying base features early on to ensure all downstream features update predictably. Mistake number two is not incorporating parametric thinking. Parametric thinking allows your designs to adapt efficiently to changing requirements. Hard coding dimensions everywhere is the major mistake. For example, imagine designing a rectangular bracket with two or three mounting slots. You sketch the bracket, then dimension each slot manually, the slot length, the slot width, distance from the left edge, distance from the right edge, and spacing between slots. That's multiple independent dimensions. Later, the bracket length increases from 120 millimeters to 200 millimeters. Now the slots don't resize or reposition correctly, and you have to edit every slot related dimension one by one. Instead, we can use parametric relationships. Define a global variable for bracket length and slot spacing. So say the slots always set at 20% from each end. When the bracket length changes, the slots automatically shift proportionally. With just a few equations and references, the design updates seamlessly. Try to leverage global variables, equations, link values, patterns, and symmetry relations to ensure that your models scale, adapt, and remain robust throughout its life cycle. Mistake number three is creating parts that break assembly mates. Mistake number one was about poor feature referencing within a single part. This mistake is about parts that are fine individually but cause mates to fail when combined in an assembly. For example, consider this two-piece assembly consisting of a gear and a shaft. Each part is modeled correctly on its own. However, the gear's bore was not anchored to a stable axis or plane for assembly purposes. When you try to mate it to the shaft or resize the gear, the bore shifts slightly, causing the mate to fail and the gear to jump in the assembly. In a real product with hundreds or thousands of parts, a single unstable feature can break dozens of mates, wasting hours of debugging and delaying the entire project. To prevent this, always design parts with assembly behavior in mind. Anchor critical features to stable references, use parametric constraints, and test in virtual assembly 
assemblies as you design. This keeps assemblies predictable and prevents costly downstream failures. Mistake number four is neglecting feature sequence and organization. Building a CAD model without a logical feature sequence can cause rebuild errors, broken references, and unpredictable behavior when editing the part later. Features added out of order may interfere with one another or create dependencies that are difficult to resolve. Take this sheet metal enclosure for an example. If you start by cutting vents, adding louvers, and punching mounting holes before you've even defined the base flange or overall enclosure shape, you're building on shaky foundations. Later, if the enclosure size changes, all of these downstream features can break and force hours of rework. The fix is to organize your feature tree to reflect proper design and manufacturing intent. Start with the base flange or main enclosure shape. Add bends, hems, or reliefs next since those define the sheet's form. Then insert cutouts and functional features like vents, louvers, and mounting holes. Finally, leave cosmetic or branding elements like logos, text, or edge chamfers until the very end. Mistake number five is not using configurations or reusable components. Many engineers create separate files for every variant of a part instead of using CAD configurations and modular design. This leads to redundancy, inconsistent designs, and wasted time when updates are required. For example, a part designed with three different sizes may be saved as three individual files. Later, a change made to the base feature requires editing all three files individually. The solution is to use CAD configurations or parametric components to manage design variants efficiently. Modular components can be reused across assemblies, reducing file clutter and ensuring consistency. Now, before we continue, I want to emphasize here that no matter what it is you're designing, sourcing custom parts, whether for personal, school or work related projects presents all kinds of challenges. Engineering projects often face very tight deadlines and finding the right supplier or manufacturer to make quality affordable parts fast and provide timely feedback is nearly impossible. That's why I highly recommend you to check out our friends at Jiga.io who is very kindly sponsoring this video. Jiga is the first trust-driven custom parts manufacturing platform that connects you with a vast network of VETA suppliers allowing you to directly communicate your requirements to them. Before Jiga, engineers only really had two options for sourcing custom parts. First were local machine shops that offered trusted collaboration and sometimes better pricing but they would often hit capacity limits can't take on every type of project or just go silent when you need a quote. Second were instant quote platforms like Exometry and Protolabs that trade higher costs for speed, but there's no supplier relationship or direct communication. They're good mainly for quick one-offs and early prototyping. That's where Jiga comes in. Jiga combines the best of both worlds by providing you with direct access to vetted manufacturers with no black box, reliable capacity from R&D to production, and pricing that actually makes sense for professional production. Recently, I needed a custom part made for a project. I simply uploaded my CAD files to Jiga, and literally within minutes, I got competitive quotes from three different suppliers and received precision parts in under a week. Jiga is also trusted by the fastest growing hardware startups and top tier companies like NASA and Siemens so you can be sure the quality and on-time delivery of your parts are guaranteed. So if you're looking to source custom parts efficiently and reliably, definitely check out Jiga.io through the link in the description below. The second category of mistakes is design for manufacturing and assembly or DFMA. Mistakes in this category affect whether your design can be manufactured efficiently, assembled without difficulty and service over time. These errors are expensive because they're often discovered late in production or testing. Mistake number six is forgetting manufacturing constraints. Mechanical engineers often design features that are impossible or inefficient to manufacture. Sharp internal corners, deep narrow holes, and steep walls can be difficult to machine or mold. For example, a designer may specify a zinc casting with a thin two millimeter wall 
wall running all around the entire perimeter. While it looks fine in CAD, and casting this wall may not fill properly with molten metal leading to defects, weak sections, or even scrap parts. This leads to delays, higher costs, and potential rework. To avoid this, understand the limitations and constraints of your chosen manufacturing process. Collaborate with machinists, toolmakers, and suppliers early on, and design features that are practical to produce without special setups. Mistake number seven is failing to design for modular or reusable components. Some engineers design parts that are overly specific to a single product or assembly, preventing them from being reused in other designs. This increases part count, inventory costs, and design time. For instance, consider the frame of a mountain bike. If the manufacturer designs a completely new frame for every model variant, different wheel sizes, suspension setups, or geometry, they end up producing multiple one-off parts. By designing the frame with modular mounting points for brakes, derailers, and suspension components, the same frame design can serve multiple bike models. This reduces manufacturing complexity, inventory, and manufacturing time, and simplifies maintenance and part replacement. Identify features that can be standardized or reused across multiple products. In many cases, you can reuse your existing components in your new products as well. Mistake number eight is disregarding tool access or assembly clearance. Designing parts without considering how they will be assembled is a frequent source of costly delays. Screws that cannot be reached, tight spaces for torque wrenches, or parts that require awkward handling make assembly inefficient. To avoid this, plan for tool access and ergonomic assembly. Include adequate clearance for hands, tools, and fasteners, and simulate the assembly process if needed. Mistake number nine is your part cannot be disassembled for repair or maintenance. Designing for one-time assembly can be tempting, but it can be costly over the entire product life cycle. Parts that cannot be replaced or serviced lead to expensive repairs, downtime, and customer dissatisfaction. For instance, many modern German cars such as certain BMW or Audi models have engine components or electronic modules tightly packed into the chassis. Replacing a sensor or performing routine maintenance often requires removing multiple subassemblies, panels, or even the engine cover. This dramatically increases labor time and repair costs, but in their defense, luxury and premium brands often assume owners will use dealerships for maintenance, so service difficulty isn't a major concern for them. But in general, design modular subassemblies, use service-friendly fasteners, and include access points. Always consider the product's entire life cycle, including maintenance and repair. Mistake number 10 is applying unnecessarily tight tolerances or omitting GDNT. Incorrect tolerances are a silent killer of schedules and budgets. Overly tight tolerances increases manufacturing and inspection times and missing critical GDNT leads to assembly failures. For example, applying a 100 millimeter tolerance on all features without functional need drives up costs and lead time exponentially, requiring multiple machining passes and lead to higher reject rates. The solution is to assign tolerances based on functional requirements and tolerance stackups. Use GDNT strategically for critical features and loosen non-critical dimensions to save costs and reduce risk. Category 3 is process and documentation mistakes. Mistakes in this category won't break your CAD models, but will slow down projects, introduce errors, and increase costs across the entire product lifecycle. Mistake number 11 is port part numbering and and approval processes. Confusing part numbers or slow, overly complex approval processes can block procurement, manufacturing, and assembly. For example, a single component drawing stuck in review because part numbering is ambiguous, the approver is on vacation, or for whatever arbitrary reason, can delay entire assembly lines. Standardize your part numbering system, streamline approval processes, and ensure all stakeholders understand the workflow. Many times, this is out of your control, so just do your best. Mistake number 12 is skipping design and FMEA reviews. Skipping structured reviews can allow critical issues to go unnoticed until late stage manufacturing or testing. Always conduct design reviews and failure modes and effects analysis early and often with cross-functional teams. Early detection prevents late stage surprises and keeps projects on schedule. Mistake number 13 is not understanding supplier capabilities or lead time.
times. Designs that assume unrealistic supplier capabilities create bottlenecks. For instance, specifying a special material that no supplier stocks can delay procurement by weeks. Many suppliers that I worked with were based in China and India, so communication was very challenging due to the language barrier. Know their lead times, process limitations, and standard materials to ensure your designs are manufacturable and on schedule. All right, guys, that's it for today. Each of these mistakes, whether in CAD modeling, DFMA, or documentation, has the potential to derail your projects, increase costs, and delay your product launches. The good news is that most of them are avoidable. By thinking ahead, collaborating with your team, and applying the proven best practices, you can deliver robust, manufacturable designs that work the first time and keep your projects on schedule. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here, where I share one thing that totally helped me to understand tolerances, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.